Hello friends, my name is Radia and I'm a Bengali American illustrator born and raised in New York City. Some of you might know me from my Instagram as Knives Meow, or you might have seen my sketchbook tour, which got a lot of views for some reason, I don't know how or why, but y'all seem to enjoy it, so what I'm trying to say is thank you for your support. I don't know what people are subscribing to because I only have one art video on this channel, but I'm hoping to change that because I filmed bits and pieces of what I've been up to right before and throughout quarantine. You'll also see or hear me pop in and out of videos because I'm filming this after I've edited all of that footage. Fun fact, I actually recorded all of the voiceovers on, on this tiny microphone that I got as a gift. It did the job, so I'm not complaining. This vlog took so long to edit because I have footage across the span of seven months. So grab a snack or some tea because this is going to be a thick one. I haven't eaten breakfast yet. So the very first week of March was my spring vacation and also my last semester of college. I visited the Bay Area with my friends. It was the first time I went on a proper vacation and also the first time I got onto a plane. It's weird watching over the footage from California because this was a time without masks and also no scary orange skies because the west coast is on fire and climate change is real. So at least we get to reminisce together. <laughs> have some, have some, have some, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, the one that's smart is the one that went and slept over there, <laughs> to be honest. Why you have to do
emergency in the US. It's kind of, kind of scary. Right before heading off to California, I actually designed a poster for an event at school that ended up getting postponed, but it was my very first official paid commission. Thank you Cartoon Allies for reaching out to your girl. I think they're using the poster for next year, so it's not going to get scrapped completely. Fran, aka Franard, was supposed to give us a talk at SBA the week I returned to school, but everything shut down two days after classes. And that is when my very expensive education transitioned online. I ended up having a lot more time on my hands since I didn't have to commute. However, a lot of things were left in my studio, which sucked because I couldn't go pick them up or I couldn't access the studio either. I graduated virtually through a pre-recorded commencement video. I'm talking end credit screen, my name pops up, like it's the end of a movie and just a, a photo of me that we took in January. I did take photos on the roof in my cap and gown and I also had my diploma mailed to me which is a very expensive piece of paper. I made my own reusable mask. It's made out of scrap fabric. Um, masks are required in New York City. I think you can get fined for one. If you don't wear one on the subway, don't be nasty, don't be a plague rat. Wearing is caring. When I finally got around to taking product photos. The section of the wall above my bed gets the best lighting during the day and it's where most of my products get their photos taken. These were some four color silk screen prints I made at the SBA print shop. I took photos of every single one of them since they all had different color densities. These were discounted on my shop since they didn't turn out the way I wanted them to look. But now that I look back on them, they kind of look cool together. And surprisingly enough, those prints were the first to sell out completely. Honestly, I grew to love the little imperfections during the printmaking process. This was a print of an illustration I made during my second year at SBA. I think this was kind of a turning point in terms of my art style, because that's when I really saw it developing. 
But even since then, I feel like my work has drastically changed, but this is kind of the root of it all. I'm glad I let my artwork take shape on its own instead of forcing my hand, because I know that by doing so, it would have definitely stunted my creativity. Just because I finished art school and I have a degree in illustrating doesn't necessarily put a cap on my skills. I don't think there's ever going to be a time where I stop learning about my own creative process. I think I've reached a point of consistency, but I don't want that to prevent me from making bold decisions either. Hello, it's VoiceOver Radia again. Here I'm just punching some of the clay pins into the backing cards. If you want to know how to make clay pins, Cheyenne Barton has a really great tutorial video on that. This was probably my third attempt at making clay pins and they finally ended up looking the way I wanted them to. I wanted to create sort of a series with the strawberry and the mushroom and the frog. Now the final design was meant to be modeled after the New York City Metro card and I called it Metro Cat. I made it as a joke and I didn't think it would turn out to be the most popular design. On a much more important note, you may know of the Black Lives Matter movement which gained momentum this year after several murders of Black Americans at the hands of police brutality. The mistreatment and injustices against Black people isn't anything new, but this year people and companies are taking accountability of their actions or lack thereof. I am not Black, but rather a woman of color, so I still experience things such as racism, colorism, and misogyny. You do not need to know someone who is black to prove that you care or justify your allyship. Especially if you're someone who has the privilege to learn about racism instead of experiencing it. It is not that hard to treat people with the same amount of dignity and respect as you would for yourself. As an artist, I wanted to help in one way or another, so I put together a print fundraiser through Instagram. I'm not exactly someone who has a big following or the finances to bulk manufacture things for a fundraiser, but I wanted to use some things that I already had on hand to contribute. I had about 38 prints that I made at SVA that I decided to use for the fundraiser. 100% of the profits were donated to various organizations, mainly Black LGBTQ plus groups since I am someone who cares about LGBTQ rights as well. We raised $347 in total, which is amazing, so thank you to everyone who bought a print and donated. I have several resources in the link tree of my Instagram bio and also in the description which highlights protests in your area and organizations that are still accepting funds. I actually went to a protest in Union Square and I have never felt such a great sense of community in my life before. It was very much uplifting and not scary or demonizing as you see in the media. Also, please remember that this is much more than a movement. These are lives we are talking about. Just don't be racist, it's very easy.
a few days after my shop had launched and Julian came over to help me stamp mailers and pack some orders. I have a self inking stamp now which saves me a lot of time and also my thumbs. I ship my items in as much paper based packaging as I can. These are craft rigid mailers for items that need to stay flat such as prints. I got roughly over 50 orders during launch and it was way more than I expected. Huge thank you to everyone who either bought from the shop or shared the post because take a look at what my room looked like while I was packing orders. Like it was absolutely hectic. Also more reasons why I just need a separate studio space. As a final touch to some of my larger mailers, I like to draw on them with acrylic paint markers. The ones that I'm using is by Posca and Montana. I just doodle a long thank you cat and some flowers before sending them off.
know what I need? I need a metro card. footage sped up for the first layer on just one tote bag. I made 15 of these and I know I should have silk screened them but I don't have the space to store more screens or a proper printing setup. I pulled this design from one of my previous illustrations which is kind of funny using my own artwork as a point of reference. I'm constantly coming up with silly or fun ideas that people end up liking a lot. Just like that metro cat pin or the sticker I made of Kuni wearing long pants. I'm glad people appreciate these strange ideas, like maybe that's my sense of humor, I, I don't know. So now I'm working on the second layer, which is this smalt blue hue. I'm really digging the lilac and pale blue color combination here. I also don't know why I do this, but I give animals eyelashes sometimes. I think it's cute. Once again, reasons why I need a separate studio space. This is what my room looks like every single time I work on a big project. Painting every single one of these by hand completely drained me. My hands were high key, cramped, and dying. So I'm probably going to either outsource or silkscreen any more future tote bags. I mix the remaining colors and dot them in the spaces between the cats and flowers. The dots make it look like confetti, so I named it the Peach Party Tote Bag. These are up in my shop. You can be cute 
and sustainable at the same time. Just saying.
My joints don't cry like they used to. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
I'm old. Baby's second birthday. <laughs> Thank you.
online for a Daiso grand opening and, and got some very important things. I got this froggy pouch and all of these Halloween themed washi tapes. I also got this cool pom-pom garland from Target and it makes me very happy. I also picked up this children's book, which is illustrated by Anusha Syed. She's a Pakistani-Canadian illustrator, and I fell in love with her work immediately and had to get myself a copy. I opened a P.O. box. Some of y'all already sent me letters, so thank you. I really enjoy reading letters, so if you do want to write to me, the address is in the description. It is a fairly small-ish P.O. box, so please keep in mind if you want to send me physical items that aren't a letter. <laughs> This is also the first September I'm not back in school. This is also the period in time where all of my student subscriptions to things are ending. And uh, student loan repayment is right around the corner. I did lose my part-time position where I used to work, so opening up a shop really came in clutch. So thank you to everyone who bought something from my shop because that directly financially supports me and the work that I do. I also bought a new camera, so now I don't have to use my phone to film everything. My Animal Crossing villagers probably think I died. I'm hoping to make this channel a place where we can chill and do art things and have a good time. I do have some videos planned myself, but definitely leave some feedback and any comments of what you'd like to see next. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you haven't already, give it a like and feel free to subscribe. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay safe and take it easy. Goodbye. <laughs>